Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through sinusitis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash sinusitis or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Sinusitis refers to inflammation of the paranasal sinuses in the face. This is usually accompanied by inflammation of the nasal cavity inside the nose, and it can be referred to as rhinosinusitis, rhino referring to nose. Sinusitis is very common. Sinusitis can be classified as acute sinusitis lasting less than 12 weeks, or chronic sinusitis, which lasts more than 12 weeks. Let's talk about some basic anatomy. The paranasal sinuses are hollow spaces within the bones of the face arranged symmetrically around the nasal cavity. They produce mucus and they drain into the nasal cavities via holes which are called ostea. Blockage of the ostea prevents the drainage of the sinuses and this results in sinusitis. There are four sets of paranasal sinuses. The frontal sinuses, which are above the eyebrows. The maxillary sinuses, which are either side of the nose, below the eyes. The ethmoid sinuses, which are in the ethmoid bone, which is in the middle of the nasal cavity. And the sphenoid sinuses, which are in the sphenoid bone at the back of the nasal cavity. Let's talk about the causes. Inflammation of the sinuses can be caused by infection, particularly following viral upper respiratory tract infections. Allergies, for example, hay fever, where the patient is likely to have allergic rhinitis or inflammation in the nose related to the allergy. Obstruction of drainage of the sinus, for example due to a foreign body that's got up the nose, trauma or polyps inside the nose, or smoking. Patients with asthma are more likely to suffer with sinusitis. Next let's talk about the presentation. The typical presentation of acute sinusitis is following a recent viral upper respiratory tract infection and it presents with nasal congestion, nasal discharge, facial pain or a facial headache, facial pressure, facial swelling over the affected areas and it can present with a loss of smell. On examination, you may find tenderness to palpation of the affected areas and the affected sinuses, inflammation and oedema of the nasal mucosa when you look up the nose, discharge from the nose and from the sinuses, and if there's an infection present, there may be a fever and other signs of systemic infection, for example tachycardia or a fast heart rate. Chronic sinusitis involves a similar presentation but with a duration of more than 12 weeks. Chronic sinusitis may be associated with nasal polyps, which are growths of the nasal mucosa that may be seen when looking up the nose. Let's talk about investigations. In most cases, investigations are not necessary. In patients with persistent symptoms despite attempts at treatment, Investigations include nasal endoscopy to look inside the nose using a camera or a CT scan of the head. Next let's talk about management. The information here is a brief outline based on the NICE clinical knowledge summaries updated in March 2021. Always check the full local and national guidelines when you're treating patients. Patients with systemic infection or sepsis require admission to hospital for emergency management as appropriate. 
NICE recommend not offering antibiotics to patients with symptoms for up to 10 days. Most cases are caused by a viral infection and they resolve within two to three weeks. NICE recommend for patients with symptoms that are not improving after 10 days, there are the options of a high-dose steroid nasal spray, which can be used for 14 days, for example, mometasone 200 micrograms twice a day, or a delayed antibiotic prescription, which can be used if the symptoms are worsening or they don't improve within a further seven days, and phenoxymethyl penicillin, or penicillin V, is first line. Options for treating chronic sinusitis are saline nasal irrigation to wash out the sinuses, steroid nasal sprays or drops, for example, mometasone or fluticasone, and functional endoscopic sinus surgery, which can be shortened to FESS, F-E-S-S. And we'll talk about this in more detail shortly. Next, let's talk about nasal spray technique. Steroid nasal sprays are often misused, which means they're not going to be as effective. A good question to ask is, do you taste the spray at the back of your throat after using it? If the patient tastes the spray, it means it's gone past the nasal mucosa and will not be as effective. Good technique involves tilting the head slightly forward, using the left hand to spray into the right nostril and vice versa, and this directs the spray slightly away from the nasal septum. Avoiding sniffing hard during the spray and then very gently inhaling through the nose after the spray. A Tom tip for you, it's worth learning and practicing how to explain the use of steroid nasal sprays. You may be asked to explain how to use a nasal spray in your OSCEs. I probably explain this technique several times a month in general practice, but it's something that's very common and definitely worth remembering. Finally, let's talk about functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Functional endoscopic sinus surgery, which can be shortened to FESS, F-E-S-S, -S, involves using a small endoscope or a camera inserted through the nostrils and the sinuses. During the procedure, instruments can be used to remove or correct any obstructions to the sinuses. Obstruction may be caused by swollen mucosa, bone, polyps, or a deviated septum. Surgery to correct a deviated septum is called septoplasty. Balloons may be inflated to dilate the opening of the sinuses. Patients will need a CT scan before the procedure to confirm the diagnosis and assess the structures. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.